Heidi Ho, everybody. This is Caleb Jones, and this is the Alpha Male 2.0 podcast, freedom-focused lifestyle design for men. Today, I'm going to cover a very important topic. It is a topic that I have discussed several times before, but I realized when I was going through this stuff that I've discussed this topic kind of in various different little places. And there's no one central area in which I've covered all the bases regarding this topic. And so I'm going to rectify that right now. This podcast is on debt, specifically how debt fits into or does not fit into the alpha male 2.0 lifestyle. And there's a lot of confusion about debt. There are a lot of strong opinions about debt. Uh, People seem to know or think they know everything about debt when they actually don't in many cases. Uh, People take very strong emotional stances when it comes to this topic. So as usual, I will give you my viewpoints in terms of how debt works in a freedom-focused, location-independent alpha male 2.0 lifestyle. And I will give you the facts and rational analysis as always. I'm definitely going to give you some of my opinions in this podcast. And as always, you are free to disagree with opinions, but you are not free to disagree with facts, (laughs) which is something a lot of people on the internet have trouble with. So first, let me define what debt means when I say the word debt. As always, I am very specific about the definitions and meanings of the words that I use. And so debt means that you owe money to someone more than 30 days. That's what debt means. If you have a credit card and you pay it off in full every month, I don't consider that debt. That's just a way of you managing cash flow within a given 30 day period. And I think that is fine. Uh, The challenge is, and I'll talk more about this in a little bit, is that if that describes you, you are a very unusual, bizarre exception to the rule. A lot of guys, when I talk about don't have debt, which I'll cover in a second, they say, oh, that's ridiculous. You can't just say don't have debt. Credit cards are great. You just have to pay them off every month. And they say that as if that's a normal, everyday, easy thing that most human beings do. No. The man who has a credit card or multiple credit cards and pays 100% of the balance, doesn't leave one penny of a balance, every 30 days he pays that entire thing off, is an extremely unusual exception to the rule. That man is very, very, very rare. When you hand a normal human being a credit card with a $5,000 credit limit on it or a $10,000 credit or $25,000, whatever it is, The emotional need and the emotional compulsion to borrow money on that card is ridiculous. And most human beings, the vast majority of all ages, of all personality types, of all intelligence levels, of all education levels, can't do that. And so when you see guys on the internet say, oh, debt is fine, just credit cards are great, just make sure you pay them off every 30 days, that might work for him, or it might even work in theory, because some guys say that don't even do this. But that only works for a small percentage of humanity. And if you're in that small percentage of humanity, I think that's great. We'll cover that in a second. I think that's wonderful. But if you go over 30 days, I consider that debt. You now owe money. You owe someone else money. You've got to pay monthly payments of that money. You're being charged interest and things of that nature. Therefore, debt is bad. I teach a no debt model, a no debt lifestyle. That means you never owe anything past 30 days, ever. And in the past... Oh, I would say almost 20 years. I have owed no money. I have not even owned any credit cards up until a few months ago. That's an exception to the rule. I'll cover that in a little bit. But I teach a model where, or a lifestyle model, where you don't have any debt at all for any reason. And the reason for that is when you have debt, you are not free. I teach a maximum freedom lifestyle. And when you have debt, you are not free. I don't care how much money you think you make. I don't care how much debt or how little debt you think you have. When you have debt, you are not free. The Bible, which I don't believe in because I'm not a Christian, but the Bible says, and it's accurate, that a man is a slave to the lender. And that's correct. When you have debt, that means you are working to pay your lenders, your creditors, not yourself. And you may say, well, I make a lot of money, it doesn't matter. Well, are you always going to make a lot of money? Do you know how many people back in 2008 and back in 2020 who made a lot of money said, oh, I'll be just fine. And they went into debt and suddenly something happened to their incomes and then they couldn't pay it. They lost their cars, they lost their homes, they lost their asses because they thought they were, quote, fine. When you have debt, when you have debt payments per month, if any financial disruption occurs in your life, and that is part of life, that is what normally happens in the world and in human life, 
you're in very, very, very big trouble. Whereas if you have no debt, you're fine. You're okay. You might have to cut some expenses, but it's easy. It's not a big deal. I've been a guy with zero debt for many years, and I've been a guy when I was a young, dumb man who had a lot of debt. And I can tell you for a fact, it's a lot easier lifestyle. It's a lot more stress-free lifestyle. It's a lot happier lifestyle when you don't have to worry about debt. In my 20s and 30s, I had a lot of debt. And I had a high income, so I figured, oh, okay, that's fine. Who cares? I have a lot of debt. I, I can pay for it. And uh, that was true some months and not true other months. It was true some years and not true other years. <laughs> and I lost a lot of sleep paying on these debts, paying on these bills. It sucked. It was very difficult to do. Even though I made a six-figure income, more than what most men listen to this podcast make. I've mentioned before that I've had the experience, again, many years ago when I was a young man, where I had my car repossessed because I couldn't make the car payments on time. Uh, I had my, uh, I didn't go into foreclosure, but I had several real estate properties that went, were very late back in my early 20s because I didn't know what I was doing because I borrowed too much money. I didn't know what I was doing in terms of debt. When you have no debt, you will be much happier, you will be much less stressed out, and you'll be much more free. I extend this concept to your older guys who are more or less settled down in that at some point in that one of your big objectives in life, in your financial life, is to pay off your primary home, to live in a paid off house. And back when I had, when I owned homes, I don't right now because of my five flags transitions I'm making right now, but back when I had a house and I owned a house in Vancouver, Washington, it was paid for. I had no house payment. And I was taught by my mentors, and they were right, that when you have no debt and you have no house payment, whenever a huge economic recession comes along, and they come along all the goddamn time, you don't even notice. You barely even notice. The guys who notice, the guys who freak the fuck out every time their income drops, or there's a recession or what have you, are the guys who have big house payments, lots of debt, things like that. If you have no house payment, no debt, you don't even care. Life just continues. It's not a big deal. Boy, is that a nice feeling to have a house and have no house payment. But Caleb, you still have to pay property taxes. Um, yes, if you live in a collapsing Western country like the United States, Canada, Europe, yes, you'll probably have to pay property taxes to some degree. If you live in a country like I live in, the United Arab Emirates, where we have no property taxes, you don't even need to pay those. Kind of nice. But that's a five flags topic that is beyond the scope of this podcast. Yes, okay, fine. You have to pay property taxes. But would you rather pay, I don't know, 200 bucks a month for your property taxes for your house, or $1,500 or $2,000 or $3,000 a month for your goddamn house payment. Uh, that's kind of a no-brainer in my book. And I'm not saying that if you're 22 years old or 28 years old, you should pay off your house. Obviously, that's a technique for older men who are more settled, who are kind of living where they know they're gonna live for the next 10 years plus. If you think you might move out of your country or move in the next two or three years, obviously you wouldn't pay off your house. But you get my point. You need to avoid debt. Having debt is a problem, even if you think it's a good idea. Even if your dad says, well, you need to go buy a house because it's better than renting. Renting versus owning is also a topic outside of this podcast. I did do a YouTube video on that. So I suggest you go to my channel, just search rent on my YouTube channel. I go through the details on that. But my point is you don't go into debt just because everyone says it's okay. Debt is bad. Debt is a problem. Now, let me cover the exceptions to that rule. Because every time I say that, I get two groups of guys who get upset. The first are the groups of guys who say, Credit cards are fine, just pay them off every 30 days. I just address those guys. That's a very small percentage of humanity. And if you can pull it off, great. And if you can't, you shouldn't have credit cards. The second group of guys who get pissed off when I say don't have debt are real estate guys. They're like, are you kidding? You're an idiot. You got to read Robert Kiyosaki, which I have. I have all of his books. I love Robert Kiyosaki. You got to listen to Grant Cardone. You got to listen to like guys like this. You know, Trump became a billionaire uh, because he used debt. And debt is very good because if you want to make a lot of money, it's the best way to leverage money in your investment. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, those guys. No, let me discuss that. There is one exception to the no debt rule in terms of the lifestyle that I discuss, Alpha Male 2.0. And that is, and I'm really specific about this, I'll be as specific as humanly possible in this. That is debt that is offset by an asset with more than 50% equity that cash flows every month. So let me be very clear and go back and explain what that means. That means that you have, for example, a rental property. Let's say you purchase a rental and a renter gets in there and the renter pays your house payment for you. It's a rental property you own and you have a mortgage on that property. Is that debt? Yes. Is that good debt? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Here's when it's good debt. It's good debt if the amount of the loan, in other words, the amount of the mortgage, is 50% or less than what the home is worth. 
So to use simple numbers, let's say you purchase a rental property for $100,000. I know you can't get them that cheap anymore, but let's say you could, in certain parts of the world you can. You purchase a rental property for $100,000. That means your mortgage needs to be under $50,000. If your mortgage is $92,000, you are an idiot. And that means you're taking a gamble. You're hoping that nothing bad will happen to the real estate market for the next you know, 10, 15 years, which is not a reality we live in. I can tell you for a fact, and you may know people who have this problem, or you may even be one of these people who had a problem, who back in the 2008s or early 1990s or 2020s or various other time zones owned a home that suddenly went underwater. In other words, you owned a home that was worth Again, for easy math, $100,000, you owed $85,000, and the house suddenly became worth $75,000. So you're literally $10,000 under what you owed for it. Numerous, numerous, numerous people, millions upon millions upon millions of people, especially during the 2008 collapse. That's exactly what happened to them, because they were stupid. I use a 50% figure because the odds of you owning a piece of real estate, residential real estate that is, that drops in value more than 50% in a single recession is very low. Matter of fact, I don't think it's ever happened in most of the Western world, United States, Canada, and so on. So you're very safe at 50%. You're not safe at 90%. You are not safe at 80%. At 70%, you're a little better. You're still not safe. I would never own long-term a piece of rental real estate where I had a mortgage that was more than 50% of the value of that property. I don't want to worry about the next real estate recession. I just don't want to worry about it. And when you're at 50% or less, you don't. And that way you can still use the leverage of borrowing money, which is a powerful financial tool that you should use, especially if you want to get really rich. I agree 100% with that. You can still use it, but you just kind of mentally set this delimiter in your head for 50%. That means I have to come up with 50% down. I got to save up 50% down and I'll borrow the other 50% and I'll pay it off. Or maybe you borrow 60% and you know for a fact you're going to pay that off like in the next few months, get that down to 50%. However you want to finagle it in your life is fine. I'm just saying that in order to qualify for what I consider to be good debt, that thing must be 50% loan to value or less. If you're doing one of these 3% down deals, oh my God. So now you owe 97% on the property? No thanks. No, You could do that in the 90s and I did that in the 90s. I made a lot of money in real estate in my 20s and the 90s. That's the kind of thing you could have done a long time ago when America and the Western world wasn't collapsing. Today, that is ridiculously dangerous. I would never do something like that unless I was doing something, you know, like flipping. Uh, maybe you're going to flip a property in two months, but even that is risky, but that's beyond the scope of this podcast as well. You get my point. We're talking about an asset that you own for the medium or long term. Now, that's not all. Just because you owe less than 50% on the value of this asset doesn't mean it's still good. By the way, I should say it's an asset, not a piece of rental property. Same thing if you buy a company. You could buy a business, and if you borrow 50% or less on that business, that's fine. If you instead borrow 95% of the value of that business, now you own a business, but you the, the loan on that business is 95%, again, stupid. So I'm not talking about just about real estate here. I'm talking about any asset that generates cash flow, you need to have an equity of at least 50% or more. Okay, so the second parameter to good debt, in addition to that 50% is, it must cash flow every month. What do I mean? What I mean is you cannot do what I know a lot of you are doing. I've talked to a lot of you. I know a lot of you are doing this. Matter of fact, in the early 90s, I did this. It was not smart and it's not smart and you do that. And that is when you buy, I'll use a rental property again. You buy a piece of rental real estate and let's say you charge $1,000 a month in rent, okay, total. And let's say it costs you $1,200 in terms of that house payment when you add everything up. Costs you 1,200 bucks. So you get your $1,000 a month every month and you have to come up with another 200 bucks to pay the house payment on that piece of property. That means that property is sucking cash flow out of you. It is not cash flowing, it's sucking money away from you. That is very stupid. That is ridiculous. So if you owe money on an item in your life that actually sucks money away from you, that's double bad. And this is one of those areas where guys like Robert Kiyosaki, Grant Cardone agree with me. It is very silly for you to borrow money on a thing that costs you money every month. Fucking stupid. If you buy a business, same exact thing. Again, I'm not talking here about rental real estate only, any asset. So in order for debt to be good debt, that means you need to own an asset. Let's use a rental real estate property as an example. And the mortgage is 50% or less on the value of that property and the property cash flows, which means the house payment is let's say $1,000 and the rent is $1,200, which means you have a $200 profit. 
you can pocket every month. Now that is an oversimplified example. There are many other expenses when you own real estate. There's upkeep, there's fees, there's a bunch of other things. So you have to factor all that in there. So let's say, let's give you a better example. Let's say your total cost of ownership of that rental property, when you had all the expenses to yourself, all of them, even the ones you have to average over a period of a year, let's say it's $1,500 a month. Let's say that's what it is. You gotta come up with $1,500 a month on average to cover all the expenses of that property. Let's say you rent that property at $2,000 a month at 50% loan to value or less. That means your cash flow is what? 500 bucks a month. That's great. So if that thing is cash flowing, creating income for you every month and that mortgage is 50% or less, now I consider that good debt because A, you're protected in case there's a recession and B, you're actually making money on that thing every month. So the debt in that one unusual scenario is valid. That's when debt in the Alpha Male 2.0 world is okay. When you have those two things in place, then you can look me in the eye and say, Caleb, I have debt, but it's good debt. And in that case, I would say, yes, I agree with you. That's good debt. The problem is what most guys do is they say, well, I have good debt. I own a rental property and it sucks $200 a month away from me every month. And I owe 90% on it. Ridiculous. That is terrible debt. That is bad debt. And if I had that scenario, I would go sell it immediately and I would put my money somewhere else. I would not put my money in an investment like that. Very, very silly. Now let's switch topics a little bit and let's talk about credit cards. As I mentioned earlier, if you have a credit card where you pay it off every month, perfectly fine with me. I don't consider that debt because you're not even charged. You're not even getting charged interest at that point. That's fine. Should you own credit cards? Well, for the past 15 years, minus a few months ago, I have not owned a single credit card. How is that possible, Caleb? How can you function? How can you pay for things? I love guys who ask that question. There are things called, I know this is a shock to you, debit cards, a Visa debit card from your bank. It is a credit card. It looks just like a credit card. It's not. It has a Visa symbol on it and you can use it to make credit card transactions. But instead of using a credit card where you're borrowing the money, it comes right out of your checking account. So I have lived 100% exclusively on debit cards for the past 15 years or so. And it's been perfectly fine. That's how you get away with not using credit cards. And I know you're gonna try to find some ways, well, what if you wanna rent a car on the NLA? I've never had a problem. I've rented cars. I've been all over the world. I've used debit cards for hotels, restaurants, rental cars, you name it, I've done it. I have never had a major problem ever. Debit cards work just fine. Now, are there specific reasons why you might wanna use a credit card? Yes, and this is one of the reasons I just started using credit cards myself about six, seven months ago, is frequent flyer miles. So yes, you can get in on all kinds of really cool deals with frequent flyer miles and other benefits like that if you use credit cards. But even then you have to be very careful. That means you have to pay off the cards within 30 days. You don't go and jack up $20,000 in debt to save a little bit of money on a fucking plane ticket. That's not what you're talking about. And that's not what I'm doing either. So now for the first time in a very long time, I now have credit cards in order to build up my credit score to get credit cards that work better in terms of travel. If you don't travel a lot internationally like I do, there's no reason to have credit cards. There's no reason to have credit cards. There's no reason to have credit cards. Well, Caleb, what if your debit card gets stolen? I read that it's easier to get your money back if it's a, if it's a credit card versus a debit card. That has happened to me. I've had credit card numbers stolen from my debit cards. It was perfectly fine. It was just a single phone call to my bank. They took care of it immediately. Uh, if I had any fraudulent charges on there, they removed them just fine without a single problem. I've never lost a single penny from having any of my credit card numbers stolen using debit cards. I think a lot of guys are addicted to some old information. I think 25 years ago, it was indeed safer to make purchases with credit cards instead of debit cards, but that was 25 years ago. There's no difference, there's no problem. I've never had a challenge with this. So I'm gonna repeat this. If you don't travel a lot like I do, and some of you Alpha Male 2.0s do travel a lot, and that's great, I'll cover you in a minute for, for credit cards. But if you don't travel a lot, you don't need credit cards. But Caleb, what if I have an emergency and I need to cover an emergency? If you have watched my online courses, if you've listened to some of the information I talk about in terms of Alpha 2.0 financial structures, you know, and I've said this many times in past podcasts and other areas, I recommend strongly that you have a six to 12 month savings account or some sort of cash reserve to cover for emergencies. So once you pay off all your debts, you should have a cash account that can be a money market account, a bank savings account. I don't like those, but those are okay. Cash in a safe, however you wanna do it, I don't care, that covers six to 12 months 
of expenses. That way, if something happens, if you have an emergency, you pull it out of your own savings instead of going to a goddamn bank and putting it on a goddamn credit card where you gotta pay 22% interest. That's insane. My personal savings is at about eight, nine months of expenses. So I have, even if I lost all of my income tomorrow morning from all of my companies, from all of my income streams, I would have about eight months to figure it out. If I come into a weird emergency that I can't afford, I just go into my savings account and I pull it out and I reimburse the savings account over the next few months to bring it back up to those totals. So you don't need a credit card if you don't travel a lot. Now, if you do travel a lot, yes. And this, I've come around on this, this is where I've changed my opinion at least slightly in the past few years, is that yes, if you travel a lot, it does make sense to use credit cards, to pay them off every month, to take advantage of credit card deals and things like that, where you can get free frequent flyer miles for signing up for new cards, where you get you know 2X or 3X or 5X on your travel expenses, where every time you buy something, you get a frequent flyer mile, and over time, that does help. You can add those up, and you can end up getting free plane tickets or free upgrades and things like that for airlines. Yes, that is valid. So what you should do in that case is go ahead and get those cards, but pay them off every month, or at a minimum, purchase up to the balance of that card when those frequent flyer mile bonuses kick in and every card is different, and then you start paying that off as fast as you can. That's a travel hacking topic, and that is a very different topic, and it's outside the scope of this podcast. But I am doing that now. Um, I, <laughs> I wanted to get some really good travel cards, but as I said, my credit score was blank, it was kind of funny. I would go to apply for loans and things. I get this big blank screen because I had no credit score. And so I had to go last year, I had to go get some really rinky dink little credit cards. And I had to borrow up to, I think it's 20, 30% to the, uh, the total balance on those to jack up your credit score and then pay those down. And I do that several times, brought my credit score up. And now I've got one or two pretty good travel cards and I intend on getting more, but, but, but I don't leave balances on these cards, man. I pay them off every 30 days or so. I pay them off because I don't want debt. I'm not using it as a debt mechanism. I'm using it as a travel mechanism. And like I said earlier in this podcast, if you have credit cards and you pay them off every month, I don't consider that debt. I just know that most human beings aren't capable of that. But if you travel a lot like I do, number one, and number two, you have a decent amount of fiscal discipline and most Western human beings don't, then sure, go ahead and get those travel cards. That does make sense for your isolated scenario. Last thing I wanna address in this debt thing, and unfortunately, I know I'm gonna get this question, so I'm gonna preempt it right now. Hey, Caleb, what about going into debt for training, for going to college? If you know my opinion about college, you already know my answer. If you don't know my opinion about college, college today in the Western world is the stupidest, stupidest fucking thing you can do. College made a lot of sense back in the 1960s. Today, college is the dumbest, 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 dumbest thing you can possibly do. Yes, there are rare exceptions, every rule, but 95% of the time, 99% of the time, going to college is one of the dumbest decisions you could possibly make in your 20s. For multiple reasons, again, outside of the scope of this podcast. So borrowing money, going into debt, $25,000, $50,000, $140,000 for a goddamn piece of paper that is completely worthless to learn things that don't even apply to the real marketplace, to go into competition against millions of other bullshit college degree graduates is one of the dumbest, dumbest things you can do. No, do not have any student loans. Do not go into debt for any sort of education. The one exception to that is if you're gonna be a doctor. You're literally gonna be a doctor, and you plan on being a doctor for 25 years, you can't change your mind, then fine, go ahead. Under that one scenario, it does make sense. The problem is you have to be a doctor for the rest of your life to pay off that goddamn student loan. But yes, under those conditions, I think it's fine. Other than that, no. And in my opinion, you should be a self-employed alpha male 2.0 location independent doctor, but that again is outside the scope of this podcast. Other than that one bizarre exception that doesn't apply to most of the human race, don't get a college degree, do not borrow money for education. No, this bullshit excuse, well, well, if I borrow money for education, I'll make more money. No, 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 no. That was true in 1964, yes. It is no longer true today. I can give you the stats, but you don't wanna hear them. No. <laughs> Whatever possible bullshit reason you can come up with to utilize debt in your life, beyond the exceptions we've discussed in this podcast, is not gonna work. No debt 
When you have debt, you are not free. You work for the banks, you work for the creditors and not for yourself. You will not believe how well you sleep at night when you have no debt. I have been in a scenario where I had lots of debt and in the last many years I've had zero debt. And you, I cannot tell you the difference in terms of day to day, week to week, month to month, peace of mind when you have no debt. And I've been in scenarios where I made a lot of money and had a lot of debt and made a lot of money and had zero debt. You cannot believe the beauty of your life when you have a high income and location independent alpha 2.0 income with zero debt. It's a really good life. So that's it. That's how debt fits into, or in most cases does not fit into the alpha male 2.0 lifestyle. This is a very big topic. If you guys want more detail on this topic or any other details on any other topics I cover in this podcast, let me know and I can certainly do podcasts on those in the future. I will see you very soon. Bye.